Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Uh, we're now more than halfway through the month of November, if you can believe that. Thanksgiving is a week from today. I'm not even going to be doing a show on Thanksgiving, and I'm going to miss it, but, you know, got to be with family and all that. But we got a great show tonight, another Zoom, and this time from Dallas, Texas. First time we ever went there. We are going all over the country. It's been like an amazing run like never before the last couple of years on Zoom. Before we get to the gentleman I'm interviewing tonight, you've got to read these incredible underwriters, of course, and then we will commence per usual. So... I want to thank Auto Country, King of the Used Car in Abington, number one in the dealer raiders from Massachusetts for 2021. Been with me since the beginning. Great customer service. We got them. We got Shoreshine. They're in Abington. Auto Country is. We got Shoreshine Professional Detailing, also in Abington. Always in search of new uh, service, uh, new, new uh, polishers for their car buffing dealers. Dealer. We got John's Greenhouses and Flora Shop in Brockton. We got Lynch's Towing Auto Cycle and Truck Center in Brockton. One number for towing, one number for projects. Always looking for. Uh, scrap metal, wheels, anything to do with transportation, my pal Lynchy there can handle, which he can handle all of. We got A1's Tire and Auto Center in Brockton, always in search of new service techs and service writers. We get one good credit in Brockton. We get Fadiologist 101 Barbershop in Brockton. We got Advanced Auto Performance in Brockton. We get Terranosa uh, Markets, uh, one in Abington, one in Brockton. They're a new one. We get 111 Tattoo Collective in Brockton. They're a new one. We got Auto, Wear, Auto Town, Auto Glass, and Auto Body in Abington. We got the Gun Runner LLC in Middleborough, the Second Amendment Freedom Store. We got the law offices of Kahalane and Stefani PC in Brockton, dedicated to, uh, uh, to the practice of workman's comp and personal injury law. We got RW Carpet and Flooring in Norton. We got Eastern Fitness right in the village shops in Northeastern. We got Doggy Boutique, all beat professional grooming for dogs and cats, run by my great next door neighbor, Debbie Siddell in Brockton. We got Grant's Rental in Bridgewater, and we got Joe's Diner in Taunton. And I want to thank you guys very much. And now, on that note, I'll now introduce Mr. Paul McHenry. Is that how you say it? That's how you say it. I'm glad you. I'm glad I asked because I never would have gotten that pronunciation correct. And you're a you're a voiceover artist. You're a filmmaker. Um, and like so many people of late, you saw one of my shows and you wanted to be on yourself. And it's and that's happening. That's coming con contagious everywhere. So, uh, well, Paul, tell me about, in a, in a nutshell, sum up what you do, because, you know, in a few words, and then we'll, we'll then we'll break down every facet of what you just told me, and we'll move on from there. So go ahead. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Sure, thanks. Um, you. So um, what I do, I, I'm, you know, since I would say the early 90s performance art, um, and more so in a professional sense in the since around 2009 was really where I started getting in front of an actual camera um, on production sets, um, starting with um, extra work on uh, seasons two and three of Burn Notice. Um, and well, then from there, it kind of just seasons took off. Two, what, what is that? What is seasons two or three of what? Of which? The show Burn Notice. It was uh, a show with Bruce Campbell. Okay. On, uh, you, you know, the guy from um, uh, Army of the Dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the Evil Dead, that's like the big name. So um, yeah, that, that's really where, uh, you know, I kind of got that fire lit to say like, wow, this is kind of like a thing that I should be doing and uh, kind of never stopped. I, I kind of kept that rolling and, you know, it was over the course of time up and down. You know, there's some like times in between where it was a little inactive, but overall <clears throat> this has been a pretty consistent part of my life. So um, whether it was uh, on film, um, with big productions like that on uh, USA Network at the time, wow. um, to being um, uh, in, in you know lead role um, just a few years ago on uh, the Owl's Nest, which um, you know we'll get into later. Okay. But um, even in um, you know in current time, where I'm doing a lot of voiceover work for NicheGamer.com. Okay. Now, uh, what's that last NicheGamer.com? What's that? Uh, nichegamer.com so oh, niche the, I, I, yep. the naming convention is basically like like you know like a niche um, a video game right and then you put that with right right well it's a it's a video game review company so okay. they they review all types of games it doesn't have to just be triple a titles although it's not you know it's not limited to triple a titles but they do those too um indie titles everything in between so um in recent time they had me they had me on board to uh, start taking a lot of their reviews and they said, well, we need a way to stand out. 
And there's a lot of review companies that are out there. Uh, obviously, everything that's on YouTube, um, there's a there's an oversaturation in some sense. So, okay. um, well, what is meant by an the, oversaturation? What is that? Well, you can find a review for any game from anyone really on YouTube. Okay. Um, just the same way you can find almost a how-to guide in so many different ways from so many different people. Okay. So how do they stand out? How would they make themselves more like a key player in that field? Okay. Even though, you know, it's kind of ironic. It's it's its its own game is what you're saying, right? I'm sorry. How do you beat the competition at at its own game? Correct. Okay. So, um, a way to really stand out would be on, on our, in our view was, um, why don't you take the review and you do a character that is reviewing it? So instead of it just being um, someone that's just coming in and talking about the game, that perhaps you would be in the role of a character so that each review has like some form of energy and a more colorful uh, way to review the game. Okay. So I, I myself may not be the person who's writing the review or it's coming from my opinion, but I'm the performance artist, I'm the actor that had me come in with that sense of professionalism to say, well, why don't you come in and do the review for, you know, X, Y, and Z titles, but you'll do this as um, one of them, more notably um, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho or uh, Mandark from Dexter's Laboratory um, or, or even something as, um, out there as uh, maybe as one of the bad guys from the game. So it's like you're talk. I'm talking to you, reviewing the game as if I'm one of the henchmen talking about the game that you're going to play when you take the role of the hero. So it's it's much more characterized and much more energetic. Okay. All right. So basically, now we're going to watch a clip at about halfway through the show. Is this is, is, is your is your character in one of these games in that clip? We're going to watch. Um, you, they've started to put the the image of the characters that I would play the role as on the thumbnail for each video. Um, but otherwise, you'll just when you hear the voice, you're going to definitely hear not me, but you're going to be hearing a, a character. So I'll, I'll give you a good example. Um, they haven't had it come out yet, but when they do the review for Sonic Frontiers, okay, um, you're going to hear the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog reviewing Sonic Frontiers. Okay, isn't that your voice? Yes. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. Now you so you mentioned you had some acting roles too. What are the, tell me about the acting roles? Well, um, I'll go to one of the the ones that I was uh, referencing earlier. Um, it was the film The Owl's Nest, which uh, will be some of the films that will or the the film that will watch some of those clips later on. But um, so I, I would say lead role or featured role. Um, his name is Nathan. He is a, I don't know, the way they wrote him, he was like a, kind of a psychopath in his own way. Okay. And uh, yeah, and he's um, the manager in the film. Okay. So is this, it's this an animated about, film? Is this, a, is this an animated film we're talking about? No, this is live action. This is okay. a live action production. Yeah. Oh, cool. okay. All right. So, so, all right. Now, what I want to do, I want to, I want to backtrack to your childhood because I do this with every guest. I want to find out what you were like as a kid and how it got you to where you're at now. Obviously, you got a pretty rich past going on with your resume and all that. But tell me about what you were like as a young, you know, as a real young kid and how it got you into what you're at, and then we'll break that down as well, and then we'll move on toward the present and the future. So, go ahead. Sure. Um, well, I was born and raised in Brooklyn for most of my childhood. Yeah, you don't sound like you're from Florida. Texas at all, even though you're in Dallas now. Right. I've only been here for like four, four and a half years. There so the, that's not going to be, the, uh, uh, you're not going to hear like a Southern twang. Not even close. That's okay. That's right. interesting. Okay. So what did you do as a kid in Brooklyn? What were you like? What was life like as growing up there? That's, that's always an interesting story. Late eighties, early nineties. So an aesthetically challenged place, but it was home. Uh, it was, okay. uh, it's basically, the smell of urine, um, oh, filth everywhere, well. you know. Uh, so the, it, it it gives you character, but um, I hope it, 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 and bagels. I'm sorry. Hope this pizza and bagels still would have to offset the urine smell. <laughs> yes, 
and that did not smell like urine. And Good. They, they definitely smelled delicious. <laughs> and you, you know, it's funny because like my mother, she still goes up to uh, up to New York sometimes and whenever she does, Good. she'll send me a box of the bagels and even slices of pizza. She'll, yeah, she'll just talking about vacuum it. seal it. You can't get anything like that in Texas. No, it's I know. not going to be like that. Who's the king of the king area of, that, of bagels and pizza? I knew that. I, oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, it, it it's it brings me back, but it's also just like a, a, a delicious treat because you just can't compare. Like That's when right. it comes from there, it's something that is definitely its own thing. It's it's much higher quality. Of course. Yeah, they they know how to make them there. They say it's the water. I don't know. Maybe it's all urine, urine infested. Maybe that's the reason. I hate to, th- you know, I mean, no, life, life, for a while. life is a cycle back and forth, in and out. You know, we know sure. where I'm going with that. It's funny that you mentioned the water because in Florida, actually, there's a place called Brooklyn Water Bagels, and they actually ship the water to their, uh, to their restaurant. Okay. And that's how they make their product. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, tell me about what you did. Aside from that, what did you do that got you into this, you know, into the line of work you're at now in now? Um, I got I got my aunts to thank because, um, you know, as a as a kid, you're really not allowed, especially if you have parents with the red head on their shoulders. They're not going to let you out um, just to go play in a place like that in an environment that was as dangerous as it was back then. Really? It's probably a little different now. Yeah. Um, but back then, we're, we're not not so much so um the, the only real thing that i could use because we, we were not really we came, you know to, to be quite frank i came from a very poor family yeah yeah um we didn't really have much so right. what we had was great but you learn to make do quickly especially yeah. as a kid and you want to entertain yourself kids they want to do stuff i wanted to do stuff i have a very good memory of being a kid and i remember well not being allowed out so you have to entertain yourself Okay. And well, why, you know, why up because it was t- too dangerous. There's too much crime. No. Of course. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we didn't have the kind of money to live in a nice place, so I, we were yeah. living in as affordable as you, as, as possible. One, basically, I understand. I get it. Yeah, and you know, I had pen and paper, <clears throat> yep. and that was Legos, pen and paper, or Sega Genesis with two games: Sonic the Hedgehog or um, Pac-Man. Okay, well, so that was 1982. I remember when Pac-Man, that was 40 years ago. I remember exactly. At that time, I had a girlfriend and she loved Pac-Man. We used to go to, we used to go to this pizza restaurant called uh, Campus Pizza, right, in Bridgewater, Mass. And she played for hours. She could play that game, boy. She's pretty good at it, too. I got really good yeah. memories of pizza places in New York. As a matter of fact, one of my most fondest memories in New York was um, having a snowball fight with my father when um, we were waiting for our pizza to be done. And um, you know, they they told us, you know, 15 minutes or whatnot. And uh, back then, and I don't know what's going on with the weather now, but I haven't seen it since I was a child. But the snow back then, you know, you could put it together, it would stick together, you could roll it, and it would make a big ball. You, it was stickier. There again, and we had a snowball fight. Water. You know, a lot of sticker. So if it comes from the sky, it's a stick as it is, you know, as, as snow is. As it's it like should. ice shades now. It's like ice sheets. Like it doesn't, when it snows, it like, it's just like a hard hardened crystallized um yeah. like ice it doesn't really make snowballs like that anymore it's not as fluffy not as fluffy and you could hurt somebody all right look we're halfway through the show we're going to watch a little clip of paul's work so without further ado keep watching we'll be right back to discuss it we'll be right back here we go all right thank you for gathering dedication professionalism integrity punctuality Now, these are all the qualities that make up a beautiful team. None of which any of you malevolent, self-centered pieces of shit even possess. I mean, really, you make about three times as much as I do for half the work. And yet, all you do is piss it away on Groupons and booze. And really, I ask myself, do you even know how brutal this world really is? Nathan, I thought I was over it, but I definitely have the flu. Could I, like, take the day off or something? Or understaffed. Sorry. <laughs> and there she is. Right on time for your first day on the job. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> Nathan, I am so sorry. I need you to cancel that in order because I got a little distracted and my hand slipped. Here. Wow. It really means a lot that you would trust me with your manager card. I can assure you that I've been here.
For fans of classic survival horror, playing Signalis will feel like coming home. Copying Silent Hill or Resident Evil would have been too easy. Rose Engine Ops for something far more creative. It wears its influences on its sleeve the way many horror indie games tend to. But it is not often when the influences are so specific. Relying on chunky PlayStation pixelation is common among the indie scene. But to take visual cues from Stanley Kubrick's style makes Signalis seem like a game that is from another time. Compounded with its nerve-like UI graphics that are taken right out of Neon Genesis Evangelion makes this title have a compelling aesthetic that makes it stand out. The Chimera's fate isn't one that falls on the side of happenstance. In fact, in Solstice's world, the Chimera are two intentionally bound together souls. To sustain existence, one must give their life to be fused with the other so that they can remain together. This sounds like nonsense now, but as the story of the perils of Ilden unfold, Solstice takes you on an adventure through the holy kingdom of Keldius that isn't meant for the fate of heart. Immediately, you can't help but notice the direct inspiration for this game's design. At the first glance of Briar's massive greatsword, popular Japanese manga franchises Berserk and Claymore are immediately brought to mind. Thankfully, I don't know anything about either, except that they exist, so I'm not going to launch into any diatribes about how Briar's out here ripping off guts. As I paraded around the lobby, it's a crime that I didn't have the option to twerk while waiting for a spot to open, so I randomly jiggled back and forth as I waited in anticipation as if there was a two-for-one special at Golden Corral. Dumping into the game was actually pretty easy. You simply sit at a cabinet and you're greeted with the option to go into solo practice mode or wait patiently for a challenger to arrive. What I didn't find too enjoyable was not having a way to change my chosen fighter once seated. Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope is a sequel to Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, an early Nintendo Switch game that gamers didn't realize they wanted until they played it. There was a lot of speculation on what kind of game it would be during the leaks, and the idea of Mario using guns was something nobody ever thought would happen. As it turned out, Kingdom Battle was a delicious hybrid of Reese's Peanut Butter Cup proportions, a brilliant mixture of Mario, Rabbids, and the cover-based strategy RPG gameplay of XCOM. While the RPG elements were very light in order to appeal to children, the core of the game was pure strategy and the character building was at its finest. The goofball story emphasized humor above all else and there was even some puzzles thrown in to mix up the experience. Kingdom Battle may have been an early Nintendo Switch classic, but there was room for improvement. How does the sequel improve over its predecessor? Find out in the Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope review. Oh, that was great. What did we just watch? Tell me. Um, well, I'm hoping you're enjoying it, but um, I'm very much enjoying it. But I want to hear from basically you. Basically, the uh, a lot of the scenes that um, came down to just you know keeping it clean, so it wasn't uh, forcing you to watch an entire film, but um, just prepared a lot of those those scenes there with um, just my interactions in um, in all of those uh, different moments where you know Nathan was basically acting like a freaking nut job. Okay. Um, or just um, just engaging with uh, with everybody else in the cast. So um, it's entertaining in itself just to see how he's crazy. And it's funny because that film actually, it racked up so many awards, I can't even tell you. It, 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 and it, it was, um, that was quite an experience, especially after the film was already done, when it just kept, like, there was just, it just kept rolling on and on and on with like all these uh, film festival awards that it was just getting. So that was um, quite the experience. How about how many film festivals did you send it to? Or did they send oh, it? Well, I didn't. It was the director. That's I mean, right. all I, I did many, was they, get casted. Many, in about it. how many in a book? Can you name, can you ballpark the number and perhaps tell me where? Probably about 10, but these okay. were all Florida centric because well, that was where it was it. films. That's where it was you know, campaigned and hopefully um, just on, aside from that, you liked the uh, the voiceover samples as well. Um, Niche Gamer, they're, they've been very good to me. So um, I, I got to give them a lot of credit. 
Okay. Now you talked about that hedgehog thing. Now you you had that as a kid, and then you got to live your dream as as a hedgehog. There's the voiceover, right? This, yeah. Um, and I, I'm waiting for that to come. That's probably in the next uh, few weeks or so. So okay. um, hopefully that when that clip gets um gets put out there, and that'll be you know long after the show's done. But um, I'll even send that one to you so that way you could you can take a look. Oh, I can't but wait. To see I'm it. also. Yeah, but um, you know, as for the other clips, um. You know the the Patrick Bateman one, that was one that I, I had a lot of fun with. Um, I've done. Um, th there's other ones too that I kind of left them out, but uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Werner Herzog, the uh, the old German director. Well, I've heard of Whitey Herzog. He was a baseball manager. Any relation? <laughs> no, actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because baseball is actually one of the first things um, I ever learned to be adept with. Now well, that's that's why I figured being in Brooklyn, you must have had some stickball experience too. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. uh, that it, it's funny because um, I played baseball. My dad wanted me to be a professional baseball player, so yeah. I played baseball in Brooklyn all the way through. Even when I moved to Florida and throughout um, my teenage years, I by the time I was uh, in high school, I had a 735 batting average, and that was because we were just practicing every day. There you go. Um, and, you know, I probably should have had a better attitude about it. I just had different interests because I was more artistically engaged right. with things. So about I, although it's very about, good. I'm sure you were. Tell me about that mural behind you. I know it's a green screen, but you painted that, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's a drawing, really. I just right, I did this cool. live at a comic convention um, okay. at a booth where um, a buddy of mine had a company, well, still a company, Mars Research in Florida. Uh, he had a booth there, and he, he he calls me up and he goes, "Hey Paul, why don't you um, why don't you come by, and see what you can do about engaging with uh, the people here? Because we're trying to advertise for the company, and um, we we could use a little bit of help with uh, grabbing some people in. So I just I grabbed some uh, poster board and uh, some markers, and you know when you do anything with ink, it's not erasable, so you have one shot to do it. And what you're seeing over here is basically done in front of a crowd of people i started doing because you know i wanted to do something big so that it's not just a little piece of paper people walk by they're going to have visibility quickly so i started drawing really really fast boom 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 boom, and uh it started gathering a crowd it was doing you know what my job was not just to make a picture but it was really to entertain people which is that's the core dynamic of what i try to do so um as you can see graffiti here, guru is what you are you're right you're, you're a graffiti guru well, I come, I come from a place where there was nothing exactly. but graffiti, so a lot of that, yes. Okay, I got it. Sweet. Okay, yeah. now it looks great. I mean, it looks like it looks like you do it well. It looks like uh, it looks like you, you, shapes shapes do not overwhelm you. you. You have you have control of shapes and you and and colors, and you have you know you have a great yeah you have it up here. It's like inbred, no question. Yeah, it's like I'm tracing what's already there, but yep. you know, you may not be able to see it because you're not in my brain. But that's where I'm trying to, you know, act as like a human printer. Exactly. Well, I can I I, I can see that you got a lot of stuff in there I, from that definitely. From and this is different because it's it's funny how there's two different modes of um, expressing illustration because you have live art, which would be something like this, where you're doing it live. You, you got to entertain people. You And it has to be big and you, you can't mess up. You can't draw yourself into a corner. Um, but then there's also the sequential art, which is a lot different because you're producing that over a long period of time and you're using, you know, microns and other very fine point pens and pencils so that you can get uh, things that are well edited and you are going back and forth until you have something that's perfected um, and ready for print. And that's where um, I have two comics that actually that I've been working on uh, for over a decade now that um, very soon we'll be able to be hitting the, the comic con scene uh, with a friend of mine named Lee Mazurk. And uh, he and I have been producing a comic called Tri-County, which is like a slice of life, like almost a period piece, which is weird to say, because, you know, I remember living the 2000s and it takes place in the early 2000s. And it already is a very different, different time than it, what we're living in now in the, the 2020s. 
And, you know, the, from the music back then, the way people dressed, the, the sentiments that people had in that society, um, the, the crises that the country was dealing with, um, the, the way uh, people found things funny were different. Um, so all of that is illustrated um, in a lot like that film Ghost World. So um, it, it, much in the same way. You're, it's a it's a comic about two kids that um, are trying to make ends meet, but at the same time, they're also um, I idiotic in the way they do it. No, no different than maybe Beavis and Butthead, but just in a different way. Well, that's it's good enough for me. Well, listen, and then there's the other one that's uh, it's called Freaks or the Family of uh, Serial. Are, are, are curses allowed? Well, you can. I, I, well, you. It, it's it's in the title. That's the only okay. reason why I asked. That's okay. The Family no of Serious Fucking Freaks. Um, okay. That was the original name, but I was I was thinking, well, let's cut it back. So it just says freaks with an exclamation. But that one is about basically post-apocalypse and where almost everything's mutants and anything that was a secret of the world is already all out there. And especially like UFOs parked in the sky. Uh, the, the ocean is boiling green, uh, toxic waste. Monsters are everywhere. So that's that one's going to be a lot of fun, too. OK. Well, that's awesome. Now, I can remember when the 2000s are way in the future. So, so it's almost like you want to talk about, uh, what do they call that? Ret retro retroactive to another time and like science fiction gone, you know, gone in on its, on, on its, uh, on, on its, uh, zine, on its un under stick, I guess you could call it. I don't know. I just made that up. But, I mean, it's because it's amazing how all the years I've lived. I mean, I remember, you know, I was born in the late 1950s and and I can remember when 1978 was so far in the future that it was like another dimension. And now it's so now it's so many years ago. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a point of artistic reference now. It's not even it like seen as like a time for people nowadays. And imagine the kids born now, they're going to look at that as like a piece of archival history that they exactly. can't even relate to at all. I know. It's crazy how the time time flies like that. All right. Well, guess what? We're down to the five minutes for the show. I hope you had a good time. I hope. We covered as much about you as we could, as we as I intend to do for every person I interview. Um, so what I'd like you to do in the remaining time is just give give a few shouts out to people that are going to see the show, and then we'll wrap the show up with my music as we began it. So go ahead. Hi, Mom. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, okay. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so some shout outs. Um, basically, uh, I would like to say uh, or give a shout out to um, Star Jiu Jitsu or George George's MMA. Um, I. I'm also, uh, I trained to fight there as well. I'm uh, two stripes on the blue belt for jujitsu. Um, they work you to the bone. They really do. And uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm aching even from last night. Wow. Um, I, I would also like to put a shout out to, um, and to uh, there's a YouTube channel out there that I've been trying to help out with a little bit. Um, GoPokeYourself.com. And they also oh. has like a, a sister channel, um, Padded Walls because uh, he is pretty crazy so it's aptly named um but also a shout out to um just the, the comics that um that lee and i are doing as well so um are also um the comic that i'm i've been working on for over 10 years with uh daniel j stout and that one is um 3013 so that one is also going to be a uh a post-apocalypse in a different way um and that is uh, more of like a, a sci-fi i'm sorry it's like a thousand years from now, almost. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It, it, so the, those are those are some good ones. I'm pretty sure that I'm missing a whole bunch, but uh, this okay. is what comes I to mind. Okay, I wanted to get to the main point. All right. Well, look, if you had a good time with me, I'd like you to just spread the word about Topic Time. Give them, give people my digits. We'll get them on either by Zoom or in person. Already. And you oh, know what? Like, There's people that are already connected to me mentally, and they're hearing all the voices. Oh, good. Okay. Well, all right. Well, okay. Paul, I want to ask one favor. When we wrap the show up, would you mind sticking around and doing a couple of pictures for Facebook? My tech guy, Joe, will take them. Yeah. yeah, sure. All right. All right, folks. Thanks for watching Topic Time. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye.